Hello from Barcelona uh, and Chaye Pellicer from the restaurant Chaye Pellicer Healthy Kitchen. I'm just there tonight to talk about my my proposals on, on my system of kitchens. I learn Ayurveda nutrition. I do also agriculture, biodynamic agriculture. Then uh, I combine this on the dishes I want to present you. We're gonna see some recipes, and I hope you're gonna enjoy it. And then it's my life for you. Enjoy. It. Hello, everybody. I want to present you one of the dishes we do the last month. Uh, it's the dish called leek, leek on the plate. What we do is uh, work with the idea of the zero waste dish. Then uh, we're gonna use all the parts of the leek. We have uh, the roots that we're gonna cut and wash very well. Then we're gonna just cut there this part of the leek. We're gonna cut just where the leek is okay to put on the plate, the size we need. Okay. Then we have, you see, the green parts because we don't cut anything, but we're gonna use it. We're gonna blanch it, and we're gonna make like a puree. Just mix it with virgin oil on a, on a blender. Okay. This is the idea. Then we're gonna find on the dish all the elements. We're gonna also blanch it the roots. We're gonna put in some water that we're gonna prepare that. Okay, when the water is boiling, we're gonna blanch the roots for three times, okay? With the water and organic sugar. Then we're gonna prepare a syrup. We're gonna confit the roots. After that, we're gonna fry it then, and then we're gonna put on the plate. The idea is all the leaves that we don't use on the recipe, we're gonna make a stock of leek, then we're gonna reduce as a demi-glass, then it would be like a big portion of water reduced at the minimal expression with all the taste of the, of the leek, okay? Okay, we're gonna blanch at the, the roots. And we're gonna do this exercise three times, okay? Then we're gonna dip out. And after we have the three times done, we're gonna put on the syrup and we're gonna just wait that the root is cooked. We're gonna clean all the parts we have with earth. We have this kind of infusion. This infusion is done with uh, lemongrass, with um, uh, some hibiscus flower, we have also licorice, and we're gonna put on the top, and we're gonna cook the leek. Okay, we're gonna add on the oil the roots. Degrees high pressure, two minutes and ten seconds. During this, we are mixing the green part of the leaf, blanched, just to make this puree, emulsionate only with emulsion of virgin oil, okay? Oil and green leaf. Just to paint the plate. It's the idea of put all the elements of the leaf into the plate. The long green part is not able to put it inside the dish, then we're gonna just blanch it and make this kind of puree. It will be very fresh, very green, and very interesting on the, on the balance of the taste of the dish. Look at this. The leek is amazing. We have a, a texture of a leek who is cooked, but at the same time, he has the form and also the color, the chlorophyll is respected and we have also respect the, 
the salt, mineral and salts of the, of the vegetable. Okay. Okay, we have the leek cooked. We we have the emulsion. You see, which is the result of keeping this part of the leek to blanch it and put it on the on a blender with virgin oil and some salt just to have this cream. You know? Then we're gonna paint the dish with this part of the leek. We're gonna take the leek. We're gonna keep uh, some um, crunchy roots as the leek. I told you about uh, what we prepare with also all the leaves we, we keep out when when we clean the, the leek and we make this uh, this demi glass the reduction of the jus of the leek that we put also on the dish. We texturize with some kuzu, just uh, natural, and then then a touch of virgin oil. And this is our dish of leek. It's just all the leek on the plate. It's a zero waste waste dish. Sustainable and very fresh. It's beautiful. Thank you so much, Chef. Uh, chef, I would love to talk a little bit more. In 2012, you turned to a healthier and more conscious kitchen influenced by biodynamic agriculture and Ayurvedic nutrition. Can you talk a little bit about what led you to that decision? Oh, you're muted. particularly notable menu structure, right, which allows guests to choose whether they'd like a vegan menu, a vegetarian menu, or an omnivore menu. I would love to hear how you've seen people react to those choices and how those have changed over time. Have you seen more uh, uptake or desire in recent years for the more plant-forward choices? Uh, sincerely, uh, I don't know so many changes on that. My idea was in 2015 to to be, to try to, to not be, uh, want to be inclusive, okay? In, in, inclusive in my kitchen, then I decided to put on the menu like uh, four or five vegetables, uh, seasonal vegetables that I can offer in uh, three kinds of, uh, one in a version, vegan version, the other one was a vegetarian or lacteal version, and the other with some minimal protein, no? What, what I, I try to do is, is, is to, to not be, 
how you say that, no, no querer, um, uh, sí. no, but the idea was, was to, to be really, to connect to, with everyone, no? Because normally in, in restaurants, uh, uh, they can tell you, no, I, I cannot change my menu, you cannot do that, I have to do that. this, this is my kitchen, and in my own way, I try to change my I plus D in, in, in the curation of the menus, and I work on the vegan way, to be there on the vegetarian way, and then to go to the omnivore way. No? And keeping the idea of the Ayurveda nutrition, when we balance an omnivore menu, you don't have more than 30% of animal protein inside this kind of menu. No? But people sincerely uh, choose what, what they want. Uh, for me, what I know in my restaurant is that uh, a lot of people try to have a tasting menu of 89 courses on a vegetarian way because they, they need to discover what we can do in, in this kind of menu when they are just uh, all time eating uh, protein and animal protein. No? And they, they try to, to have uh, a nice experience and just understand. And also, we have a lot of customers that they are vegan or vegetarian. And this is the, a normal way in our restaurant right now. That's a perfect segue, I think, to our next video, which is a recipe for peas that you shot for us, right, Chef? Yeah, thank you. Wonderful. This is the dish, one of my favorites and famous dishes I do since uh, 21 years ago now. This, but we change the, we do first of all uh, fresh green peas, we are on season. Um, uh, what I do 20 years ago, it's to do it with a tripe cut, with a collagen of the tripe cut to make a pill pill. It's a kind of emulsion of uh, the collagen of the animal and uh, the, 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 the oil of chive. What we do in this recipe, more healthy, more on the way of what we are doing now in the restaurant is just to prepare these uh, fresh green peas. We peel them, we, we take the peels and we make a stock just to make the, like an infusion. Then we're gonna wait that to use it on the, on the recipe. We're gonna put some fresh garlic, a touch of powder of this fresh garlic. We're gonna add the small fresh green peas. We're gonna put a touch of salt and pepper, some pepper, some salt, and we're gonna just put this to make an étuve, just to cook under the, the own juice of the. We have some organic shiitakes, confit, that we're gonna add in later. Uh, we prepare also chive oil with uh, some uh, olive, olive oil and chive that we blanch it and we mix it on the blender and then we, we put it uh, for one night uh, just decanted and we, we have a very nice green oil just to, to, to have a very, very colored dish, okay? Green and green and green. We have some kuzu with water prepared because this is the secret for us to make um, a real pil pil, a vegetable pil pil. No? We're gonna add to the piece a touch of uh, truffle oil, okay? Just touch some shiitake. We're gonna add some stock of green pea. Just a touch. We cover it for one minute. We delay the kuzu. And we're gonna add some kuzu just to keep the texture. And then to add Pil pil, but vegetal. 
with no animal protein inside, okay? Look at this, the color, amazing color. This is done. We're gonna plate this wonderful and amazing fresh green piece with a vegetal peel peel with some amazing and good organic shiitake how is the end of the season I'm gonna wrap some truffle on the top of the stock of the skins, also using all the parts and elements of the vegetable on the dish. Enjoy it! It was gorgeous, Chef. Thank you. Um, what that dish reminded me of is your approach to uh, uh, sourcing produce and your, the way that even your omnivore menu features an extremely intentional selection of food, so where the producers are, the, for the most part, biodynamic and extremely seasonal. I was wondering if you could talk a little bit more about what you look for when you're buying produce and how you choose the produce that you use in the restaurant. Uh, you know, it's, for us it's very important, uh, first of all, to meet people. No? People who is involved in uh, this own job, also agriculture, also producer, also uh, someone who is uh, with uh, animals, uh, we try all the time to find uh, organic uh, producers, organic suppliers. We, 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 we try to find also biodynamic, which is more difficult. But uh, for us, the connection between people and uh, they, their essence, also our conscience of food, um, and find the product as we want the seasonal uh, time, it's, it's so important because uh, when I told before about the uh, vital energy we can find on the vegetables, uh, sometimes that could sound like holistic, no? It's really that's holistic, but uh, anyway, uh, the, the products are alive. Then when you have the connection with the producer, uh, you can try to, because I'm on a city, that, this is a, a, an important point. I'm not on the, out of the city, near the land, and I can open my door of the kitchen and I have just my, my potager or whatever there, and I can pick my, my fresh herbs or whatever. I'm on a city and I, I try to bring this from the local producers around the, the Barcelona, not, far, not very far, and I try to keep this freshness uh, daily from the restaurant for my customers. No, this is the, the, the symbiosis no, about what we try to, to, to do. It's not, season is not easy because it's more easy to eat, to call a big supply and you can buy everything. No? But when you are looking to where you are looking for a special and um, focus uh, vegetable seasonal, you need to go to different, very kind of different uh, supplies and have to meet a lot of people and at the same time you need to go uh, monthly one or twice to see what's going on and what we can work uh, next and to have all time this kind of connection for example for my, my, my chicken supply my organic chicken in a restaurant mine uh, i receive each 15 days and i i, I have to know how many chickens I need for 15 days and I have to process these chickens because in 15 days they, they cannot be only fresh. You can make different preparations, you can put feed, you can put... But th this is the, the, the magical thing that you can uh, have the best chicken uh, in Catalonia in the restaurant but you cannot have it every day. You cannot buy one chicken every day, one chicken tomorrow. You have to organize your, your kitchen. No? And not on the same idea, it's with the vegetables. Vegetables, of course, are more. This is uh, what we try to 
to transfer to our customers on the plate. You know? It's how we can take this freshness quickly on the plate and then we can have a nice experience with our, you know, it's, uh, we, we make our, our very own kitchen. Then we need the technology also. We have this technology in the kitchen. We have a fire also. We have the grill, we have real fire, we have a wok, we have uh, this uh, oven that, that you see on the first video. This is for us very important. We can cook uh, high pressure steamed. Then we respect a lot uh, the vegetables, the greens, the chlorophylls, the mineral salts, uh, the fibers of the vegetables. And for us, it's, it's very important. Uh, we have plancha, you know, it's typical from Spain. We work with the plancha with not so many fat. Sometimes it's, it's really less fat. And, Original, uh, it's you know, a kind of, of food that is very, we call it, it's so healthy. No? Then, when you balance with the Ayurveda concept of nutrition and you don't use a lot of lactose, so and you don't use, you don't use practically gluten in your, in your concept of menus, the result for us is that people can have a very nice digest at the end. And this is the, the nice combination of what we are trying to, to transmit with our kitchens, is that you have a nice experience on the table, uh, sometimes better after that, no? And sometimes when you make a very nice fiesta, uh, the digest is not uh, so good, no? But we cannot control if you drink so much alcohol or whatever. No? This is not <laughs> our hands. But for the, the structure of the menu, we do the best. And your menu changes oh, your menu changes quite frequently, right? Where if today the peas don't have the same energy that they did last week, for example, then it's not going to be peas. How do you approach that? How does your kitchen approach that rapid change? In my kitchen, uh, you know, now they know that. Uh, it's uh, normal because uh, it's true. You are all true. Uh, we cannot have every day the same product, the same energy product. And sometimes, it's not for only for the breath, it's the weather. The weather change. You have a very bad weather and some products can not, they are dead, or they are, no, you, know, you, can, you cannot use it. Um, we are all time connect on this. This is the, the which is real magic, you know? At the end, you can have an attitude as a positive or not positive. For me, it's to be all time positive. It's a good chance to change things. It's, it's nice. It's, uh, you have to, to make another thinking, you have to change, you, you have to compose the dish, you have to imagine uh, the taste, the flavors, the textures, and you can make a team building with your, my team and just uh, work together and uh, mix the ideas. And uh, at the end, I decide, but we are five, six people in the kitchen that uh, they have boys. And, they have mind and I need to, to take that and shape it. You know? So it's not that you have to change, it's an opportunity to change, and it's a positive opportunity to change the menu every time. That's wonderful. I love that, Chef. Um, thank you so much for your time, and thank you for dialing in. I know that just, you just finished service, or you're about to start service. Yeah. You're about to start service. No. In the middle of service. My goodness. Well, thank you so much for joining us in the middle of service. It's been an absolute pleasure having you, Chef. Thank you. Next up, I'd like to welcome um, the CIA's own, you've met him before, probably needs no introduction, Chef Sayat. Hello, everyone. Hello. Welcome again. We have an intimate group. I want this to be as open to conversation. Feel free to raise your hand as I'm going through my artichoke peeling and a little bit of spiel about Asian food uh, and uh, fire away questions. We're going to talk about artichokes. Uh, it's one of, you know, I timed a lot of my dishes to the season that we're in. That's, we have artichokes growing in the garden. Uh, and uh, as the chef of the restaurant here and a couple different uh, functions at the CIA, including a 3D dining, uh, the lunch box, you might have had some um, uh, frosés there already, and um, uh, all the events that happen at the CIA as far as weddings and things are concerned. I am, uh, I have the privilege of using all the garden produce. 
so artichoke is one of those things. We use the artichokes uh, quite extensively <coughs> all year, actually, because California has two growing seasons. Uh, we don't have water, but we have a lot of sun. Uh, so with the water that we find, we uh, grow a lot of Mediterranean um, things that fit uh, well into the climate, and artichoke is one of them. Being in the uh, choke uh, thistle family, it's a great pollinator too, so it, it, you know our gardeners love them as well. Uh, and uh, you know a lot of parts of it are used differently, like the leaves. They're bred specifically for the leaves, sometimes called cardoons. And then you have um, you know the, the regular artichokes. There's two varietals that grow in California mainly, um, uh, and uh, we I, you see them wild in the Mediterranean, everywhere from uh, you know. Uh, the, wet, uh, the Aegean Sea, uh, the sea that borders the west coast of Turkey, all the way to Lebanon, you'll see them. I mean, I've seen them there. I'm sure there are abundant other places uh, on the Mediterranean coast as well. Um, I'm from Istanbul. I've been in the United States about 17 years, came here uh, to study crazy things like molecular evolution, switched my career a couple times, was an engineer before I started cooking. Um, and that was about 10 years ago. Um, so I've been a chef for, only for about 10 years. Um, after cooking at Michelin star restaurants, including Le Bernardin and Blue Hill, which both have um, influence on the dish that I'll talk about in a second. Um, I, I, me and my wife moved to the West Coast. Along the trip, we staged at 25 different restaurants, uh, including Rebouchon and Husk and August in New Orleans, Uchi in um, uh, Austin, um, uh, and Bestia in LA. So we had a lot of fun, but by the time we came here, we saw all the chaos, and I mean, you know, not in a bad way, all the chaos in all these restaurants. So, uh, you know, three years out of culinary school, uh, uh, my wife is a CIA alum as well. We started our business in San Francisco called Istanbul Modern SF, a cuisine of an Istanbul that could have been, basically. Uh, and then uh, that turned into a great restaurant. Uh, we won uh, some accolades in San Francisco called Noosh. Uh, we've recently parted ways for lots of reasons uh, from that restaurant, and that's one of the reasons I'm here and I'm proudly running uh, CIA's restaurant. But I, you know, the cuisine of Venezuela that could have been is basically the idea that uh, excites me the most, and every time I say those words, I get goosebumps uh, because as an Armenian in Turkey, uh, you know, I've uh, lived through the cultural appropriation of all endemic Armenian mezes, have lived with my Greek uh, friends and heard their stories of how, you know, this meze is really Greek and that baklava style is really, uh, you know, not Turkish and uh, all of that. So, um, a cuisine uh, that basically avoids the cultural appropriation that is abundant in the Middle East, uh, so I don't get into the politics. Well, I get political, but without getting into the politics. So, um, artichokes. This is a glo globe artichoke. They come in different counts. Uh, one of the things that builds characters uh, for cooks, one of the first things I'll throw at them is basically peeling uh, their artichokes. Um, and uh, and it, it's a labor of love. So on the streets of Istanbul, when, whenever you're uh, there for, in the season, you'll find uh, folks basically uh, sitting on the corner of a street with their truck full of artichokes, peeling them. And pre-cooking, when I didn't even know I had this passion in me, I, I would admire them and watch them go through this. And I never actually thought uh, I, I would develop it as a, skin, a skill one day. So this is an artichoke. Um, first time I peeled an artichoke, I was at Blue Hill. But then at Le Bernardin, I was on a station called Artichoke Station. And you, what you do is basically peel artichokes all day. Um, and uh, you know, another thing about Le Bernardin uh, that brings me to full circle with the plant forward idea is um, that they, we basically uh, obsessed about the center plate being the fish. The fish is the start of the plate. And uh, now my idea with uh, uh, cooking such a plant-forward cuisine that's driven by the garden is how do we treat vegetables as such? And you know, I've talked about this topic for those of you who've heard me uh, speak a couple times. You know, how do you take the? And we've all talked uh, here at the conference. How do you take the center plate uh, meat 
out of the equation. While I'm doing this, I'm going to drop my aromatics into my stock here, the cooking liquid. I have parsley, tarragon, some bay leaves from the garden. Um, all of those herbs are from the garden. Celery, uh, carrots, and some shallots. They'll go in here. The other thing that's gonna go into my liquid is um, uh, preserved lemons. If you've walked the dining room at the Grove, you'll see my giant jars of preserved lemons. It's my way of taking over the dining room, basically. Um, but um, So this has sugar as well as salt in it. I'll put this in, let it dissolve, and then taste it. Also, this is, uh, this is a way of using the pulp. Uh, so I use it in brines and stocks to add acidity, but also there's 12 months of flavor on these uh, preserved lemons. So you have that slow flavor development and extraction that adds a depth of quickly poached uh, dish as well. And there's a little bit of orange peel on, on here too. So we'll let this uh, steep and come together and I'll keep this spatula just in case I need it. Thank you, chef. Um, so artichoke, I took the outer leaves off um, uh, to make the knife penetration easier. This is a serrated knife, brand new actually. So serrated knives obviously get dull as well. And, um, and you uh, basically want to use a sharp one. So um, I like to keep the artichoke as stable as possible. Uh, excuse me, turn the artichoke and keep my knife hand as stable as possible. And you do eventually get callus. I don't know if you can see my, the callus on my fingers here. Um, this is basically pure artichoke right here. Um, and that's because I'm the, you know, the, the turning seems, I mean, I'm using a lot of strength here and it's not, there's, it's unavoidable. You can't get around that. You just have to um, sort of develop the forearms for it. Um, so, and I try to fill up the artichoke, the bottom of the artichoke to see how deep I'm going to get into it uh, before I start peeling. So, uh, as you see, I have uh, some of the, uh, you know, core of the artichoke exposed already, but there's still a lot of fiber, so we want to work around that. So, to, before I take off another layer, I'm going to turn it down and then um, flatten out my bottom, um, the bottom of the artichoke as well. And I should probably talk a little bit less so I can focus on making this pretty. Um, how many of you have turned artichokes before? It's good, it's a good chunk actually. So let's see if I can uh, get uh, new tips from anybody uh, while I'm doing this. Anybody have a trick for their artichokes that they want to share? Yes, Chef. Yes. <laughs> I've so never done that actually. Like a spoon knife to get the choke out. Like a grapefruit knife, but uh, sort of, yeah. a, a grapefruit. But as sharp as a chef's knife. Yes. So then I'm going back to the edge one more time and then uh, turning this towards the inside so I can take some more of the leaves off. Um, and if I do this right, we'll have a very, basically perfectly trimmed artichoke on all sides eventually. And. Um, then we'll cut all the chokes out the, from the top. That, I mean, you know, in the United States, one thing I, I, I notice is, you know, we all bake the artichokes and pick it, which is great hand uh, sort of like interactive experience, but that's just not how we eat it in Turkey. It was fascinating to me when a diner said to me, oh, is this a canned artichoke? Uh, how did you get it to this shape? Um, and uh, that was like a moment of, uh, clarity for me that I didn't understand because, you know, that's just, this is not how we eat artichokes in the United States. So when I come to this point, and there's still a little bit of fiber, I can refine this a little bit further, right? All of this is going to get in the way and be fibrous in your mouth. By the way, in the opening reception, I served uh, this dish uh, on uh, one of the first counters, if you've tried it. So um, um, maybe that'll give you a little bit more of a frame of reference. So this cut is super important. I like to get it right, oh, of course I do, but uh, right the first time. So this gives me a full exposure and just the remaining chokes inside. This is the part Chef was talking about. And I'll even obsess and go around and trim this a little bit further so it's even on both sides. Because it is center plate, right? We're giving a vegetable uh, perhaps instead of a meat. So it does 
have uh, to have that a little bit of increased value perception, then uh, you know the labor cost comes in, of course. But uh, we're in California. Who cares about labor costs, right? So this is the part that you also want to get done uh, in one shot as much as possible, right? Without destroying the walls. Now I'm losing traction. I'm going to get, get out and dig in one more time. Y voila. And then I'll go back and I, I like to get all these little buds out because they'll brown really fast. So. You see, it's already browning. It's like uh, it's one of the most oxidizable vegetables, if that's a word, in the world. So that's our choke. So we'll squeeze into here and then rub the whole thing with lemon. That's what I saw in Istanbul streets, by the way. Um, so that goes in here. My water is not fully acidulated, so I'll squeeze a little bit of lemon in here as well. And once our liquid has a little bit of flavor. Okay, I'm halfway. So I think this can steep a couple more minutes and then we'll drop the artichoke in there. Um, so artichoke, this tradition of poaching things in olive oil is one of the most fundamental cooking techniques that's associated with Western Turkey. And the amount of olive oil basically determines how uh, long you're going to preserve it. So my mom will go to the market on a Saturday or a Sunday and basically pick up some vegetables, cook it that day or the next day, and serve it to the family all week. So we'll always have a vegetable plate on the table, whether it's Romano beans in the summer or celery root in the winter or artichokes in the spring and any variation of these things or a combination of these things all year, basically. So, and, um, so that's what uh, house uh, cooks do at home, and it's part of you know, home economics. You're making a big batch of food, touching it once, cleaning a few uh, dishes and everything. And also, in restaurant world, this cold meze culture is very often driven by the olive oil poaching. And uh, olive oil as a flavoring agent, as well as a preservative. So, um, and again, the quantity of olive oil will determine uh, the, the ratio of olive oil to uh, you know, cooking liquid will determine how long you keep it. And, 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 and even dolmas are traditionally cooked uh, with a lot of olive oil, so the olive oil actually preserves the rice and the shallots that are cooked in it. So I'll go maybe half this uh, little carafe here, and I'm basically looking for a thin layer of olive oil covering the top, and as it cools down, that you know, olive oil that's circulating in the liquid will basically penetrate and um, give the cooking vegetable extra creaminess. It's, um, it's a fascinating thing. So this idea exists, of course, in other cultures as well. Um, I see in, you know, southern uh, France a lot. That's the berry gold. That's actually an artichoke cooking liquid. It'll have white wine. I'll often add white wine into my cooking liquids because I'm not in Turkey anymore. And, Cooking with wine is not, uh, you know, shunned around here. And then, um, and then uh, in in Spain, obviously, you have all the conservas uh, of different types of vegetables, everything from white asparagus to artichokes. Again, in Italy, the same thing. Um, but Turkey just applies this idea a little bit more broadly to a lot of vegetables um, across the year. Even for braising greens, will often cook them in olive oil and basically serve them um, as uh, needed. Um, and then restaurants thrive on this idea as well because a, you know it's prep heavy basically so you can prepare your mezes ahead of time and serve them when customers come and retain that freshness uh, at the same time. Um, all right, so we're going to... The, in, uh, there's typically a fresh component on top, but not always. So some, sometimes the, the olive oil poached, uh, poaching vegetables will actually make it uh, their way onto the plate and become the garnish on the artichoke, for instance. So my mom will serve the artichokes with uh, potatoes, peas, carrots, and onions that have been steeped with um, the um, artichoke. So, I'm going to make a little salad here uh, with some chopped herbs and peas, uh, favas, and uh, chickpeas, and some zucchini uh, florets, flowers. 
um, blossoms. And the herbs are actually from the garden. We're, again, super lucky here with our garden that you might have walked in the front. Feel free to grab and smell things. The um, apricot and peach leaves right now are very delicious. And I would really recommend you to just bite into one of them. I mean, pick it and then bite into the leaf. Um, because they have a very unique flavor. We'll make yogurt with it um, to inoculate with you know, terroir-driven um, bacteria. So we'll chop this up. And I'm actually going to put a little bit of diced uh, rhubarb into the salad. In, in Turkey, rhubarb is often scrambled with eggs, believe it or not. It's uh, typically kept very uh, undercooked. Um, so I'm actually going to serve it raw. It's a misconception that rhubarb needs to be cooked. It's the leaves that are poisonous. Um, so this is a very, very typical salad, dill, parsley, and uh, just uh, some fresh legumes. We'll dice this up as well. Of course, um, nice uh, Renoir here. So the idea is how do you put a vegetable in the center of the plate and not even have somebody think about what am I going to have for um, dinner tonight, right? So. I'm going to go into my liquid. Um, maybe it's a little shallow. Uh, that's okay. You can just go here. I'll take another pot, actually. I have another pot here because my water reduced down enough that the artichoke is not submerged. So we'll do a little switcheroo here. So this will probably be ready in about eight minutes. And that will be right at the end of our time. But we can take it out and I'll, I'll share with you some um